could die. After the brutal 2022, investors went into 2023 worried about persistent inflation and expecting a recession by the second half of the year. And who remembers the first quarter regional banking crisis, which sparked fears of a credit crunch? Instead, inflation has cooled and economies have remained solid. And for most investors, the final quarter of 2023 marked a much needed comeback when it came to both equity and bond market performance. Global and local financial markets rallied in December to end 2023 on a high note, as the tightening monetary cycle now complete, and economies appear, at this stage anyway, to have weathered the storm. US Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen recently said in an interview that a soft landing in the US economy was now underway, after solid December job growth data and consumer spending patterns suggested confidence in the economy. But many uncertainties remain and market fragility is still prevalent. Increased optimism for a Federal Reserve rate cut in 2024 was the main proponent of the positive trend in December, which seemed only fitting in a year where market dynamics were largely influenced by investor sentiment. Heading into 2024, debates will likely be focused on whether global economies will continue to avoid recession, whether inflation will stay on its moderating path, and whether the Fed will cut rates as aggressively as investors currently expect. Global equities, as measured by the MSCI All Countries World Index, or ACWI for short, ended the month up 4.8% in dollar terms, bringing the yearly performance to 22.2%. The strong end to the year was supported by developed market equities with a 4.9% gain for the month and 23.8% for the year. This performance should, however, be seen in the context of how it was generated. Most of this has been driven by the so-called Magnificent Seven, which includes the likes of Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet or Google, Tesla, Amazon, Nvidia and Meta or Facebook. Of course, most of these names have been closely linked to the hype surrounding artificial intelligence or AI and the narrative that it will change life as we know it. Collectively, worth more than 10 trillion US dollars, those seven shares alone are equal to roughly double the size of the entire stock markets of South Africa, India, Brazil, and Russia combined. Part of the sheer magnitude has been their share price performance this year. These stocks contributed 39.8% of the total, return, total index return for the year, up 74% compared to a fairly pedestrian 12% for the rest of the world's companies. This is extremely concentrated, as there are nearly 3,000 shares in the MSCI ACWI. Contributions from other developed markets were also positive, and most constituents delivered solid returns. The UK, Japan and Europe all posted monthly returns above 4.5% in dollar terms. Emerging markets lagged their developed market counterparts with a 3.9% return in dollar terms, which brought emerging markets yearly performance to 9.8% in dollar terms. Overall, emerging markets lag developed markets by more than 10% for the year. Big contributors for December were Brazil and India, with 7.2% and 8.1% returns respectively in dollar terms. The standout underperformer was China though, the only large market to deliver a negative return over the month. It was down 2.4% in dollar terms, following another unexpected regulatory intervention from the Chinese government. Emerging markets' yearly relative underperformance is the, to developed markets was largely driven by the underwhelming performance of the Chinese market, down by 11.2% over the year in dollar terms. Moving our focus to bonds, December saw generic 10-year yields decline in all major markets, leaving the World Government Bond Index up a significant 4.2% in dollar terms for the month. Investors will be relieved to see a positive annual performance of 5.2% in dollar terms, especially after the turbulent, turbulent year experienced in 2022, one of the worst in decades, which saw bonds down 18.3% for the year. Although the RAND had a strong month, strengthening by 2.6% against the greenback, the local currency ended the year 7.8% weaker to end the year at 18 Rand 56 to the dollar. As evidenced throughout the year, the local equity market was largely influenced by local factors, global factors, which improved investor sentiment, translating into strong year-end performance. This was supported by a favorable November headline inflation print, 
which brought the local market up 2.9% for the month to bring the year's performance to 7.9%. From a sector perspective, financials fared best over the month with a strong 5.8% return, bringing the sector's yearly performance to an impressive 20%. Industrials lagged with a muted 0.7% return over the month, but still ended the year up a strong 16.6%. Resources ended the year with a negative month to bring the total performance to a remarkably low, minus 11.8%. Local property ended up being the best performing domestic asset class for the year, rallying 9% in November and 9.9% in December to bring the return for the year to 10.7%, some 3% higher than local equities. This is a reminder of the importance of portfolio diversification with appropriate exposure to all asset losses, even if the ride can sometimes be bumpy over the short term. Local bonds ended the month 1.5% higher, with the main driver of performance coming from the 7 to 12 year area of the curve. December's positive returns brought the yearly performance of the OB to an impressive 9.7%. If we zoom out and look at the returns, over longer time periods, we can see that local and global equities, global property and local bonds all outperformed local cash over the 5, 10 and 15 year periods. All asset classes, except local equities with a marginal underperformance, did better than cash in 2023. This should be considered against the backdrop of one of the main themes of 2023, the temptation of moving to cash due to the attractive yields on offer. As we always mention, cash has its place in any portfolio, but exposure should be weighed against the long-term return potential of all asset classes. From a portfolio perspective, what is worth noting is how quickly things can change. If we cast our minds back to the previous quarter, we discussed the impact that interest rates have on the valuations of all asset classes. Quarter three of 2023 was a tough quarter for financial markets and all the multi-asset solutions delivered associated negative returns. Fast forward back to December, and as mentioned earlier, with monetary policy tightening now hopefully behind us, the impact of investor sentiment on markets during 2023 translated into positive portfolio performance for the house wheel multi-asset solutions during the last quarter. This illustrates the importance of staying invested for a minimum of the recommended time horizon of the portfolio, in order to maximize the probability of getting to the return objectives of the solutions. MFP Focus 3, 5, 7 and 7 Unconstrained were up by 6.1, 7.2, 7.4 and 7.5% for the quarter. The Momentum Focus Fund of Funds also delivered healthy returns of 5.6, 6.2 and 6% for Focus 3, 5 and 7 respectively. The multi-asset solutions delivered returns in line with or ahead of peers and their respective CPI plus benchmarks for the quarter, as well as the full year for 2023. Due to the time constraints, the numbers have not been finalized yet, so there can be a slight difference to the official numbers that will be published on the December 2023 fact sheets. Please refer to the fact sheets once they are published for December for more information. Thank you.